This is Mr. Hartle, and I'm teaching art and PE here at Serrano. Here's a mural, an example of a year-long project in my advanced class. We look at celebrated artists such as Mondrian, how do you get a clean line um, using painter's tape, how working with pastels, how do you keep your project clean. We examine observational drawing because that's a key component when going into college and a career. Using different materials such as magazines to arrive at a really neat end result. We examine Jackson Pollock's process as well as other artists processes. We look at when working with clay you know additive and subtractive. We use the pinch, the coil, the slab method, all those hand building methods. We examine everyday household products and we get people to question or to even see a, an everyday material such as tinfoil but how can an artist use that same material and, and help people to question or see it in a different light. So my students work together and they collaborate on year-long projects, on murals. They, they have to use critical thinking and creativity and communication when, when doing these sort of projects. And they get immediate feedback, what's working, what's not. You know, and in our class, you should be able to see how someone uses the scorn slip method, how they hold a brush or the, a wooden knife tool, how they put on a wash or how they approach painting a sculpture. And it's a layered process. It shouldn't just be one and done. They get on the wheel in my year-long art classes. They work together to, you know, okay. evaluate the ergonomics of, say, a handle. We do screen printed mugs, so as they're working together in partnership, um, as they pull that off, it's exciting to see what that screen print. They work in color balance and color harmonies, they work with watercolor and colored pencils. But here, she's building up from light to dark, as you should with watercolor. Building up that value, that subtle gradation, those subtle values are what make it exciting, those sudden changes, those gradual changes. And, you know, when you're working on, on designing your own composition, as in this cartoon character uh, design, they're utilizing the rule of thirds. How do you create space? You use overlapping line, placement on the paper. And talking about placement, you know, eyes. Look at the eyes of a portrait. The eyes should be halfway down, but a lot of people think that they're three-quarters of the way up a face. We, when we're painting in my year-long classes, understanding the foundations, we go over, you know, scumbling, a la prima, which is wet into wet, or glazing, a thin transparent layer over another. Um, we look at soft edges versus hard edges, because painting's about relationships and how, how uh, you know, the edges work together. What, you know, warm colors come forward, cool colors push back in space. So it's getting them to understand these basic techniques and then so that they're ready in high school to apply it to these more sophisticated compositions, working critiques where they see where they can improve or what's being read by the viewer versus what is lacking. Um, my students will get a good sense of painting and working in various materials and mediums and have a strong foundation when entering into their high school career here at Serrano.